Hi, I'm Debbie from Property Apprentice, and today's podcast is how to use your credit cards responsibly. Splurge season is over. This means that it's time to pay back any debt you owe from gifts and trips over the holidays. And I'm not just sending this out as a reminder because payment deadlines are fast approaching, but also because managing your debt makes great financial sense, especially in harder times like what we have at present. Economic forecasters are seeing dark clouds ahead for some of this year, and judging from the patterns of increasing interest rates and inflation, it's likely that we'll be faced with tougher financial times, but this doesn't have to spell the end of your goals for 2023. If you consider financial freedom as one of your priorities, here are some of my suggestions on how to use credit cards responsibly. Firstly, pay your debt before making another purchase. What's worse than having a sizable debt? having more debt on top of it. Do your best to pay off your credit balance before you use your credit card again for new purchases. And because credit cards are a type of unsecured debt, they often have high interest rates, which could increase the amount you owe. If you continue to pile on your expenses, it's going to become more difficult to pay. You might be thinking that 0% interest cards are an exception, although many companies offer interest-free payments over a period of time, which can make purchases more affordable in the short term, it always pays to be mindful of their terms and conditions, as some of these offers can expire. Secondly, choose your card wisely. Consumer lending is a highly competitive industry, which means that companies are willing to innovate and create special incentives to attract customers. Do your research and choose a credit card that offers perks and a valuable reward system for timely payments. However, even when incentives are offered, don't fall into the trap of overspending just to get the rewards. Some aren't worth the cost. If cash flow's tight for you, signing up for a low interest card is appropriate. It's also worth taking time to review your current provider. You might want to consider switching to another provider for better deals or services. Third tip, make payments on time. You'll be shocked to see how late and interest fees can stack up on delayed payments. Not meeting your payment schedule will negatively impact your credit score and hold you back from achieving major financial goals like securing a home or investing in property. Strive to pay down your debt with money in your bank account. I've heard of cases where people use credit cards to pay off other credit cards and that can be a really dangerous trap because you can put yourself into a debt spiral. If you're only ever paying the minimum required monthly payment, you'll pay a huge amount of interest before you ever pay off that credit card balance in full. So always aim to pay off as much as possible each month and better yet, pay off the entire amount owing each month and then you won't be charged interest at all. Fourthly, audit your receipts. Retain your credit card receipts, and when your bill arrives each month, compare your saved receipts with your monthly bill. If you notice any discrepancies between the charges you've made and those that appear on your bill, immediately report these issues to your credit provider. By doing this, you can help protect yourself from human error and fraud. And also, it's a good way to double check that you're not paying for subscriptions that you never use anymore. Fifth tip is to strategically close down any unused credit card accounts. A simple rule is to only use what you can afford to pay. If you've got unused multiple credit cards that charge high annual fees, you're better off closing them down. And if you're in the opposite scenario where you've got multiple cards and struggle with excessive spending, my advice is also to let those go. Keep in mind that several cards are harder to juggle and budget for, Keep it light by having one or two cards maximum. It also pays to note that if you're working on on saving up money to buy your first home or an investment property, the total amount of your available limits on your credit cards will affect the amount that you'll be able to borrow for a mortgage. So, you know, it's worth discussing that with your mortgage advisor as well. Taking a step towards financial freedom doesn't mean you have to totally remove your credit card from your life. It just means creating a healthy relationship between how you see and use money in a way that supports your unique goals. My mum once said to me that your credit card has a limit, not a target. And I think that's one of the best bits of financial advice I've ever been given. So for more tips on how to successfully manage your finance, stay tuned to our Property Apprentice podcasts.